of the storm came ripping up the coast and made a 90 degree turn right in to Brigantine here. The eye passed right over us in Atlantic City. Over 2,500 homes were flooded in this town. We had eight people displaced from their homes in our little church and six people were still rebuilding their homes. One has torn their home completely down and is rebuilding from scratch. Probably a third or maybe even more of the people stayed on the island. The reason they do is because we found out when we tried to get back, you're not allowed you to get, get back, back on, until get they back say, on. so you want to get in there and get the carpet ripped out and you can't do it. Coming into the church for the first time after the flood and into our house, which was damaged by the flood, was a real shock to see everything ruined on the first floor of the church. Everybody, including us, started ripping everything out. All the sidewalks were full, piled high with furniture and carpets and everything all over the whole town. This has been five long hard months for us as a church. We're meeting in the community center. Some of the people can't come there because there's a lot of steps and we're just sitting in chairs and some of the older people, the people that have health problems, can't sit on the chairs. Touch Global was such a help to us. It was just a real ministry of God, which Touch Global did for the church and for our home. And we've been able to use our home then for extra meetings. We had 22 people over the other day. We just invited all the people that were affected by the flood in our church being displaced from their home and not being in your home just like if you're on vacation for even a week you're glad to get back home imagine being out for five months some places just had a few inches in their home but that's still enough to have to rip out the drywall and the flooring and everything else and others had three feet in their home and that took out all the furniture and everything that they owned and that happened a lot here it's nice that we can be a listening ear and be there when they need something different ones know of the church and they would come and ask how was the church going i've been able to to talk with some people. It's been a, a good opener. Yeah, God has a purpose in it. We're the only uh, Bible teaching evangelical church on the island. We're the only one that got hit by the flood. <laughs> so, okay, Lord, you know, there's some reason and purpose for it. Different outreach of different people in the different area where we're meeting, which is on the other side of town. We'll see the outcome of this when we come back. It's been really a time of testing of our faith for patience and, you know, just waiting on God for what happened why it happened and what will happen now as a result. We were at a stopping place for about a month. It just seemed like it was uh, a test. You know. yeah, that decision involved an inspector locally saying, even after we had the drywall in, that oh, it's going to have to be ripped out and new wiring all put in. So appeal was made then to the state and we were able to change that so we didn't have to do that. We yeah. appreciate all the people that came. I'd say probably over half the states were represented here over the time. I mean, there were people from everywhere. They're the parents of a deacon in our church. I had a chance to talk with him while he was displaced, and uh, he gave his life to the Lord. So we don't know what the effects That's will be great. when everybody's back. It seems like a new day. It's not just a new church building, or I should say a revitalized church building. This has a lot to do with how we reach out to the community because so much of the community is still suffering, and it's going to be a long road ahead. We go in after natural disasters and crises to help people get back into their homes and help rebuild churches. A lot of our focus is not just on the church itself, but it's in reaching the community around the church. We've had the opportunity to lead a couple people to the Lord as a result of our ministry in Brigantine. We've had teams as far away as Utah uh, that have come, all coming to help rebuild. We have four objectives whenever we go into a response. Our first objective is we want to see the body restored, and that's what we've been doing at Brigantine Bible Church. Getting the building back together, getting the the folks who come to Brigantine Bible Church, getting them back into their homes, helping just to restore the body to a point where it can minister in the community. Our second focus when we come into a response, we want to see multiplication of churches and uh, making disciples, seeing people come to know Christ. The teams have walked the community just doing prayer walks and praying for people as they meet them, praying for families as they walk by houses that are not lived in, trying to invest prayer into the community, saturate the area, kind of planting the seeds or preparing the soil so that hopefully we can see a harvest of souls for Christ and then disciple them and see them grow in their relationship with Christ. The third focus that we have is on the volunteers. We want to see them transformed. We want to see them come to know God, come to see God in a new way. The fourth focus that we have, we want to see the communities and churches transformed as these volunteers go home. See them start maybe a new ministry in their own home community or their own home church. So who knows what's going to happen as a result of people coming and serving here at 
uh, Brigantine Bible Church and in the community, there may be ministries that are starting back in, in people's own home communities, their own home churches.